Hello, beautiful people. Uh, over the last couple weeks and the next several weeks, I have been and will be sharing little snippets from you from my forthcoming book, All Flame, Entering into the Life of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. It's, as I've said, a Trinitarian spiritual theology that focuses especially on how seasons of crisis uh, lead us into deeper union with God. The snippet that I want to read to you today is from chapter 5, which is entitled, The Story Didn't Expect. And in this chapter, what I'm arguing for is that there are moments in our stories where Jesus leads us in directions that make absolutely no sense to us. And so what I'm trying to do in the chapter is plumb the depths of that spiritual experience. What is it about that that is so critical for us? And what I'm arguing for is that when Jesus leads us in directions that we would rather not have gone, what's happening is he's actually crucifying and resurrecting our will so that our will comes in accord, uh, in accord with his will, uh, which is the final good of our will. So this section is entitled Finding Ourselves. How do we come to know ourselves except by having our will crucified and raised to life again? Here's the section for you. In order to live, the will must die and be born again with and into a power beyond itself. Does that sound familiar? Jesus once said that everyone who sins is a slave to sin. The self-guided will that wills only itself is, in fact, tragically captive. But he continues, if the sun sets you free, you will be free indeed. Only Jesus can really liberate the will. Only Jesus can make us free. Elsewhere, he says, anyone who loves their life will lose it, while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. The message is clear. The way to save our freedom, paradoxically, is by giving it up. The way, to the way to save our lives is by losing them. The way to save our stories is by yielding them to another. We, the masters of our fates and the captains of our souls, can only really be so just to the extent that we surrender our self-mastery, our self-captainship, to the extent, in other words, that we say yes to Jesus. If you think about it, this is really the entire shape and structure of discipleship. Consider the rite of passage that has historically marked the new believer's entry into the church as both a member of Christ and of his people. Baptism. Paul writes of baptism using stark imagery. Or don't you know, Paul says, that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead, for the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. And Paul is saying that in baptism, our old way of being dies with Christ. To take the plunge to enter the waters with Jesus is to say no to ourselves. It is, to put it one way, a funeral service. Now here lies Andrew Arndt buried with Christ this day of this month of this year. And in that identification, a whole new way of being is made possible. Paul writes that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. Andrew Arndt is not destroyed, but is rather put to death and raised to life again, lifted up, elevated, and transformed by the encounter with the Lord. In the act of self-surrender, we become more ourselves than we ever would have been on our own. It's counterintuitive, I know, that we find ourselves not by going inside to determine who we really are, but rather by going outside of ourselves to meet the Lord, who takes us and makes more of us than we ever could have made of ourselves. But it's the gospel, and it has marked followers of Jesus from the very first. In discussing the Apostle Peter's transforming journey with the Lord, theologian Hans Urs von Balthasar wrote, Simon the fisherman could have explored every region of his ego prior to his encounter with Christ, but he would not have found Peter there. I love that. For the present, the form summed up in the name Peter, the particular mission reserved for him alone is hidden in the mystery of Christ's soul. Each time Simon follows the understanding native to Simon, he will go dangerously astray, whereas he will always hit the mark when refusing to confer with flesh and blood. He attends only to his commission, which reveals the Father's will for him. Brothers and sisters, we do not find ourselves by going inside of ourselves, which is what our culture is constantly telling us. But we find ourselves by going out to meet the Lord who holds our identity. And part of what that will entail is that there's a crucifixion of the will. And one of the ways that the Lord does that is by leading us in directions that we never would have expected, never would have planned, and maybe that we don't even really understand. And all of us have been in seasons where our lives have taken us in that direction. And if you're in the midst of that season, my encouragement to you is just to receive from the Lord that breaking of the will that will make you truly free. The book is All Flame, uh, Entering into the Life of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Pre-order on Amazon. It's out September 15th. And help me blow up the internet uh, with all flame hashtags uh, when we come to that day. Grace, mercy, and peace be with you, dear friends.